Personally, I experienced gay conversion therapy in 2014. It was an electric shock, gay cure. I just accept one electric shock conversion therapy treatment six years ago, but I still remember the the shock and the psychological harm that bring to me. I think for many people, they experience many days, many time of treatment in China because of their sexuality or gender identity. En el centro comienzo a gritar que soy lesbiana, que no tengo nada que hacer ahí, que esta es una vulneración a mis derechos humanos. Pero lo que conseguí fue que me encierren. Ahí me dejaron. Me cogían con los brazos hacia atrás en una especie de trípode mientras me golpeaban y me decían que aguante como macho. Luego me vestían con ropa femenina y obligaban a los hombres del centro a que me acosen. Este es el relato de una mujer lesbiana encerrada con la complicidad de su familia en un centro de rehabilitación de adicciones en la ciudad de Cuenca, Ecuador. Y esta es una realidad que viene sucediendo hace más de 20 años en el país. Despite homosexuality having been removed from the International Classification of Diseases in 1990 and transgender identities being removed in 2019, perceptions of LGBTIQ identities as disorders persist and efforts to change, to convert, to suppress or divert them continue. Y de los casos que hemos llegado a conocer en estos espacios se pueden llegar a dar prácticas de diferentes formas de acoso diferentes formas de violencia psicológica, privación de alimentos, suministro de alimentos de mal estado, dopaje, administración arbitraria de fármacos, encierro en calabozos, encadenamientos, colgamientos, ahorcamientos, baños en agua fría, maltrato físico y ejercicios forzados. Pero lo más fuerte es que se han detectado casos en donde se han dado electroshocks y también se han dado violaciones sexuales correctivas. For instance, within the family structure, we are raised with certain values, and going against those values is deemed disrespectful to your parents and in some cases, even your ancestors. In addition, religious and cultural ideologies promote the need for LGBTIQ people to change or suppress their true selves. This creates a toxic, vicious cycle, whereby the victim yearns to change yet is left carrying the blame when it doesn't happen. The fact this is normally conducted by close friends and family known and trusted by the victim adds further to their trauma. The forensic credibility of the assessment that is now on the table of the psychological and physical damage created by conversion therapy is undeniable. We're seeing documentation of a decrease in self-esteem episodes of significant anxiety, depressive tendencies, depressive syndromes, social isolation, intimacy difficulties, self-hatred, sexual dysfunction, and suicidal thoughts. These have all been documented and reported upon. What we did was we used our health-based expertise to document the severe physical and psychological pain and suffering caused by these practices. And we documented how these practices don't comply with medical ethics and professional evidence-based uh, medical practice. 
the forensic credibility of these assessments really strengthened the documentation and gave a lot of the actors in the field the position and the ability to say this evidence shows without a doubt that this practice of conversion therapy actually qualifies as torture. The WMA is an umbrella organization with 115 national associations of physicians from different countries in the world. In 2013, the WMA adopted a statement on natural variation of human sexuality. The statement condemns so-called conversion therapies as violation of human rights and stipulates that it is unethical for physicians to participate during any step of such procedures. Now. No government can deny the reality that conversion therapy is torture, both physically and also, importantly, psychologically. And then I took the legal case to the court in Beijing, and we won the case. It was the first legal one winning uh, in China on the LGBT equality. My mandate has made a call for all of us to build a world free of conversion therapy. To end conversion therapy by 2030, we will all need to involve our efforts. I thank warmly the IRCT for its involvement in this task, and I am sure that together with the extraordinary human rights defenders that we've heard today, we will be able to create such a world.